Welcome back. In our last lesson, we learned how to merge two tables with a one-to-many relationship using the merge method. Merging data like this is a necessary skill to bring together data from different sources to answer some complex questions. Sometimes we need to merge together more than just two tables to complete our analysis. In the previous lesson, we used two tables from the city of Chicago. One table contained business licenses issued by the city. The other table listed info about the local neighborhoods called wards, including the local government official's office. Now, we also have a table of businesses that have received small business grant money from Chicago. The grants are funded by taxpayer money. Therefore, it will be helpful to analyze how much grant money each business received and in what ward that business is located. We then could determine if one ward's businesses receive a disproportionately large amount of grant money. To pull all of this information together, let's first connect our grants table to our licenses table. The two tables are related by their company name and location. Let's pause here for a moment. If we merge the two tables using only the zip column, then a 60616 zip of Reggie's bar from the licenses table will be matched to multiple businesses in the grants table with the same zip. Our code sample prints the first few rows and some columns of the merged table. The output of the merge duplicates Reggie's bar for each matching zip in the grants table, which is not what we want. If instead we merge on address only, there's a small risk that the address would repeat in different parts of the city. Therefore, the best option is to merge the tables using the combination of both address and zip code. We merge the two data frames as shown before, except in this case, we pass a list of the column names we want to merge on to the on argument. This allows us to use multiple columns in the merge. As before, the matching rows between the two data frames are returned with the columns from the grants table listed first. However, when we merge on two columns, in this case, the address and zip code, we are requiring that both the address and zip codes of a row in the left table match the address and zip code of a row in the right table in order for them to be linked to each other in the merge. We can now extend this example to a third table. First, we merge the grants table with the wards table on the ward column again adding suffixes to the repeating column names. Note that we're using Python's backslash line continuation method to add the second merge on the next line. Python will read this as just one line of code. Without this, Python will throw a syntax error since it will parse it as two separate lines of code. So don't forget your backslash. Now our output table has information about grants, businesses, and wards. We can now complete our analysis. We can now sum the grants by ward and plot the results. Some wards have received more grants than others. We could continue to merge additional tables as needed. We stopped at three, but if needed, we could continue to add more. The code here shows the pattern you will follow as you merge more tables. Now, let's practice merging multiple 